I thought of the things the Kapos had told us. Were these showers, water, or gas? I began to shake with fear, and Muti gripped my hand tightly. Suddenly, cold water poured down onto our heads. There were no flannels, washcloths, or soap. But the cool water revived me, and I began to wash away the last three days of weary traveling. I scooped up a small amount of water and moistened my parched lips. Muti patted my bottom and smiled at me. Her fair hair, now darkened by the water, lay against her head, curling over her ears and at the nape of her neck. I thought how young she looked. I loved her so much. Eventually, the flow of water ceased. Doors at the other side of the shower room were thrown open, and we were able to walk out. I looked around for a towel, but there were none supplied, nor any clothes. Our wet bodies had to steam in the heat of the afternoon. We were ordered to walk in single file towards a couple of women prisoners who were shaving everyone's hair. All hair was being removed. My pubic hair was soft and new. I had watched it appear over the last two years as I turned into a woman, and now I was going to have to submit to having it shaved off. Open your legs, the capo ordered. I was intensely embarrassed as she scraped the razor over my soft skin. I did not see the reason for this humiliation. After that, she shaved my underarms, but when she started to cut off the hair on my head with large blunt scissors, Muti could not resist trying to interfere on my behalf. She tousled my hair with her hand and said to the capo, She's very young. Leave her a little hair on her head. There was Muti, beginning to take charge. Incredibly, the woman complied and left me with an inch of golden spikes framing my forehead. Muti smiled at me. That looks quite sweet, she said encouragingly. Where are your steel supports, she demanded, just as they were chopping off the hair on her head. I must have left them in the shower, I said. They were the last things I had been worrying about. Oh, Ava, really, she said in exasperation, as much with her own condition as mine. She looked strangely unlike my mother as her hair fell away. How will you manage to correct your bad feet without proper supports? I'll go back and get them, I said, but as I turned, I was immediately prevented from moving further by a capo with a truncheon who barred my way and warned me to stand back. She was directing the line of naked and shorn women to a table at the far end of the room where everyone was being questioned in turn about their names, ages, and professions. It was just like being admitted into a hospital. Every detail was written down on a form, this efficiency gave us a sense of being enrolled. As I stood and listened, I noticed that everybody in front of me suddenly seemed to have a useful profession. Ordinary housewives declared themselves to be cooks or dressmakers, shoe menders, or nurses. So when I came to give them my details, I said I was a secretary. From time to time, SS men came in and strolled around to look and leer at our bodies. It was a sport for them to pinch the bottoms of younger, attractive women, and I felt really degraded when one of the men walked near to me and then pinched my bottom. We're being treated like cattle, not people, I thought. We were lined up to be tattooed on our arm with numbers corresponding to those on our admission papers. Muti was branded first, and when it was my turn, she stood beside me with her arm round my shoulder. She's only a child, Muti said. Don't hurt her. Once again, the women acquiesced so that the tattoo on my left arm was done as gently as it could be, and my number came out much fainter than the others. All this processing had taken hours. We were very thirsty and feeling faint. I was so thirsty that I promised myself I would drink the first water I saw. At last, we were moved on to the final reception room, where we were given some clothing. Everybody was issued one pair of knickers, underwear, of indiscriminate size, one overgarment handed out at random, and two shoes. Not a pair of shoes, not even a right and left shoe, just two odd shoes. 